Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. This is Angel Ferguson, your host. We thank you so very much for joining us. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As always, it is a pleasure to come and, and just share words of encouragement through the Holy Spirit with you. And we love to stay connected with you, our listening as well as our reading audience. If you would like to connect with us, please visit our website at www.aferguson.swrp.simplesite.com. Via our website, you have the opportunity to check out our publishing division, Hope and Truth magazine, Motivation That Inspires Bookstore, as well as our ministry. Our email address is aFergusonWRP at yahoo.com. Please email us. We'd love to hear from you. You can also subscribe to our magazine, Hope and Truth. 12 issues are at $36. And upon a new subscription, we will send you a complimentary issue. And you can also make a request for us to send you a newsletter. We can email it to you or mail it to you. The option is totally up to you. Other ways in which you can connect with us are via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, our YouTube channel, iTunes, and iHeartRadio. Just look for The Balance of Life. And our station here on Spiker.com is Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson. Today on this Monday, we just would like to share some words of encouragement with you. No matter where you are in your life, just know that God has a purpose and a plan designed just for you. And as we share with you on today... Over in the book of Isaiah, as God foretells of the coming Messiah, and we're also going to share words with you of encouragement that he is God for for us all. There is no male or female or nationality or He is God for us all. If we would confess, if we would believe in our heart and confess with our mouths, once we come into the knowledge of him, once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he too can become our God. And I think that is so very important for us to know. And and as we are sharing with others the word of God, that they know that as well, that they are not stuck with false doctrines and, and things that are not of truth that says, you know, that he is just a God for this set of people. We are told in the word of God that if we would believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths, and, and we're also going to share with you just some words from God where he is saying, even even unto the stranger of your house. And and that what that means is, is those that you become a witness to. If they would believe also that he too will be their God. So we thank you for joining us today on the balance of life. We pray that the words that we share with you, that it will cause you to examine where you are in Christ. If you have not established a relationship with him, that you will do so. And if you do have a relationship with him, that you would seek to fortify that relationship, strengthen your relationship with our Lord and Savior. 
the more you learn about him, you will find that there is yet more to learn of his awesome power, of his grace and his mercy, of his love and kindness, for truly he cares all about you. We thank you for joining the Balance of Life today. If you are looking for cleaning services for your business or your residential area, contact Fran and Ann's cleaning service today. The owner is Angelina Green. The telephone number is 813-410-7922. Email address is Fran underscore N underscore A N S C S. at yahoo.com once again that's Fran and Ann's cleaning services for your business or your residential area for the month of March our business spotlights has two great features stylist Miss Lavette and caterer Sunday Taylor Taylor made sweets so check out our March issue of Hope and Truth magazine you can read about these two awesome women entrepreneurs as they discuss with us how they got started in business and how they have expanded their brands and and the avenues and and what keeps them going this is a new feature for hope and truth magazine and if you are interested in being featured as one of our business spotlights for the month or if you are looking for avenues in which to advertise your business or professional services please feel free to email us at aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. Subject matter would be advertising and specify if you would like to have your business, professional services, organizations featured as a business spotlight, or if you are looking for advertisement rates, Subject matter would be advertising rates. Our rates start at $30 a month, which includes advertising here via our station, Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson, and add in Hope and Truths magazine, the printed and the online version. Your ad we will mention on the air during each live podcast and your ad will appear in the magazine in the printed and online version per month once again those rates start at thirty dollars let us get into the word of god and if you would join me over in isaiah the 42nd chapter as god is talking about the coming Messiah and and what led me over here is I was reading in Isaiah and I was reading over at the 56th chapter and also over in the 57th chapter but then I backed up and you know it's always good uh, to back up and, and I always say that we can read a certain passage or a scripture but we need to find out why that certain area of passage was being said and who said it and and what happened afterwards and 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 that gets us in 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 understanding what we're reading I believe that before we 
quote a scripture, we should understand why. Why was it said? Who said it? What are my obligations? Because in order for us to receive the benefits, we must first meet the obligation. That is so important in this Christian walk that we meet our obligations, that we follow instructions, and that we are faithful unto our Lord and Savior. And so let us begin. Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, it says, Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, and whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. And so as I first started off reading, I was reading over in Isaiah the 56th chapter, where God is, is saying that his love, his, his salvation expands even beyond the Gentiles, even beyond strangers. And, and, and what we want to define a stranger is, is, is anyone who does not know our Lord and Savior for himself. But we, as effective witnesses, we share and we tell others so that they too can come into the knowledge of Christ and that they may get to know him for themselves and accept them, accept him as their Lord and Savior. And, and then in turn, they too become effective witnesses. But it all must start somewhere. And so as I was reading over in the 56th chapter, and it, and it says, Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hands from delivering it from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak anything. The Lord hath utterly separated me from this people. Neither let the Enoch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the Enoch's that keep my Sabbaths and choose the ways that please me and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. I think that will re I'll read that again because that is that is so good. That is so good that that says that uh, we all have an opportunity. We all have an opportunity to know the Lord for ourselves. It is an opportunity that no man can take from you. It is our job, once again, as witnesses of Christ, to inform those who do not know that he will accept you also, that he loves you also, that he cares about you, and that he will establish you as well. And so I say to you today to find yourself in a position that you are sharing the, the true word of God, the true gospel, so that those who, who do not know him may have a desire to know him because of your effective witness. How will they hear unless we share? How will they know? How will they learn? That is our obligation, to share the true goodness of our Lord and Savior. And so this verse that that is so... Is such a blessing unto my spirit 
Isaiah 56 and 4 says, For thus saith the Lord unto the Enoch's that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant, even unto them I will give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also, the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taking hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcast of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him, besides those that are gathered unto him. So God had a, a chosen people, and he's saying that I am for all people. He's saying that if, if you accept the Lord, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, as you, as you follow the commandments, as you follow the instructions of the Lord, that your sacrifices shall be accepted. That your worship, that your praise, that your prayers shall be accepted. And as I was reading that, I, I like I said, I, I went back. I went back to Isaiah, the 42nd chapter. And here over in the, the, the 42nd chapter, he's talking about the Messiah. He's talking about Jesus. He says, behold, my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, and whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reel shall not shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens, and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, this is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare, before the spring forth I tell you of them. And as I begin to read this, I'm like, okay, God is, he, he's, he's foretelling of Jesus, the Messiah and his purpose. And that he is a God for all. That is the God that we serve. Even as an example, that he is a God for all, if we were to take a look at Naaman, the leper, he was not amongst those of, of God's people, but there was an effective witness in his house. 
a maid unto his wife who shared of the goodness of God and told of his healing power through the servant. And although he went and he heard the words of the prophet, it wasn't until he became obedient and accepted those instructions and did them that he was healed. Now the healing was of the flesh. It was shown of the flesh, but it was really of his spirit, of his soul, that he too came into the knowledge to know God for himself of his healing power. Because why? There was an effective witness who shared of his goodness and his and his mercy. And so I say to you today, remove the limits of who you show and share of God's goodness, that you become an effective witness. It's in our actions. It's in our character. And for those who we think that are not paying attention to us or those even that we might feel will not be receptive of hearing about the true and living God, I can tell you that they are watching you. They are watching your character. They are watching your demeanor. They're watching your conversations and the words that come out of your mouth. I can guarantee you this. The minute you step out of order and you act the way they act, the first thing that will come to their minds is, I thought that they were a Christian, that they they live different and, and set aside, and, and therefore we must be careful of how we present ourselves. It's not always that we get to say something, but they're watching. And they're trying to figure out the difference between you who confess Christ and those who do not. It is our obligation to walk and, and, and to show and to be that difference. And so as we further desire to encourage your spirit today, we look over in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, it says, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire thou shall not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon thee for I am the Lord thy God the Holy One of Israel thy Savior I gave Egypt for thy ransom Ethiopia and Sebia for thee since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. If that is not encouragement for your soul today, because you have set your love upon him, because you have made the decision to be faithful, to be obedient, to follow the instructions of the Lord thy God because you have submitted yourself unto 
his commandments. He will do these things for you. And I will read that again as, as this. He says, when thou pass through the waters, I will be with thee. When you go through those tough times, when your back is up against the wall, when it seems that you, you just can't figure it out and the tears begin to flow and they seems that they, they will not stop flowing. Or you can even get to a point where, God, I just can't cry anymore, but your spirit is grieved because of everything that is going on around you. He's saying that I'm going to be with you. He says, though you go through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. It's going to get hot. It's going to get heated. But don't give up. Do not throw in the towel. Keep your trust. Keep your focus. Keep your mind on the things of Christ. We are going to have trials and tribulations. And they are to build our character so that we can become effective witnesses for him so that we can be a witness to someone to say, you know what? I was experiencing a period of doubt, but I begin to seek God and in, in his righteousness and the things of Christ. And that spirit of doubt was lifted from me. There are some that have gone through not feeling a part of their family. They were born into a family, but they did not feel a part of that family. But he's saying that here that I, I welcome you in mine. When you accept me, I accept you. I have love for you. And I will establish you just as I have established that nation that I gave my name to. Because you have believed on me, the true and living God, that you've looked at all the other gods and you found me to be faithful. You found me to be of truth, that I will not harm you, that I have no hidden agenda only to establish you for a great expected end. The true and living God will not cause you to sacrifice your children as other pagan gods have done. He's saying that's not the kind of God that I am. I have these guidelines and I need you to trust and to believe in me and follow my commandments and judge righteously. You do these things and I'll bless you. He's saying that once we, as the effective witnesses, share of his goodness and his mercy to those who did not believe. And once they come into the knowledge and they accept him as Lord and Savior for themselves, he will accept them. He will love them just as much as he loves us. He has no respect of person. He loves us. And we, as an effective witness, we should want others to experience the same blessings, the same attributes. We should not be selfish, so selfish that we, we, we want to just keep this all to ourselves. We should want others to experience the love and joy of Christ that we experience. Let us not be so caught up in, in ourselves that we're not witnessing so that someone else can experience the same joy, the same peace that you are experiencing. Don't become so selfish that you see your brothers and sisters going astray and that you're not praying for their deliverance, that you're not reminding them that Jesus loves you 
even though you are where you are, he loves you. And if you would give him an opportunity, he'll make some changes in your life. That struggle of addiction that you might be going through, he can heal and deliver you from that. And and we must also get an understanding that that addiction is, is not always about drugs and alcohol. There are other addictions that we've all experienced. Become a, an effective witness today. Be honest. That he delivered you or, well, I can always talk about me. We are very transparent here. The addiction of pride and, and self-control. Low self-esteem. He delivers us. Truly, if he did it for you, he can do it for someone else. And so today on our day of, of encouragement, which should be every single day, we want to encourage you to be an effective witness. Be a witness of Christ. Don't be ashamed of where he brought you from because someone else is in that same position. Where you came from, someone else is there now. But because we don't want to become transparent, because we do not want to admit of where we came from, we make it seem as if we've lived this perfect Christian life and that is so far from the truth. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all experienced some things that someone else can identify with because truly before you got to where you are now, someone witnessed unto you. Someone shared their shortcomings with you and you were able to identify. You were able to see the awesome change that God had done in their lives. So today I encourage you to be that witness for someone else. Be that one that shares the goodness of God according to Isaiah the 56th chapter. Tell them that God loves them and will accept them as well. Isaiah 43, and 10 says, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be any after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no other, there is no Savior. Isaiah 43 and 10, I'll read that again. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. That ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved, and I have shown when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy God, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, The army and the power, they shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They shall not, they are extinct. 
they are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and in the rivers in the desert. The beast of, of the field shall honor me. The dragons and the owls become become an effective witness today. He's saying, this people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. You are a, a, a witness. You are a witness of Christ. Because of the many things he has done in your life. Who is my neighbor? Hmm. Who is the stranger? The strangers are those who do not have a relationship of Christ. They do not have a relationship with him. They do not know him for themselves. But you, you are a witness. So we have to move in the opportunities of being an effective witness so that they are no longer strangers and then they become your neighbor. And then we have to become so very careful that we, we share the word of God in love and kindness and not as a weapon to beat anyone over the head or to chastise them but to show love because truly just as he loved us and he showed forth his love and kindness, he will do the same for them. And that is what we're supposed to do. Be careful how you witness, not to judge, not to cast opinions, but I believe the best way to witness is to share your testimony of how one day you were in a place and 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 I can always talk about me I found that I wanted a relationship to end and I kept trying to walk away. And these words hit my spirit and I begin to pray it. I begin to ask and pray that the soul ties were broken. It wasn't enough that I had walked away and, and I was no longer calling or or communicated with this person, but it went deeper than that. It was a soul tie. I was still connected. And I no longer wanted that connection because I knew that that connection was not a connection of God. And so I prayed that prayer. I tried to do it on my own and it didn't work. And as I'm sharing that, that is the first time that I've shared that with anyone. And yet I share it on the air and I pray that in some way that you will review where you are in Christ and as you seek him 
concerning your relationship with him that one day you are able to when directed through the Holy Spirit to share those things with someone else because someone else is going through not now or or might be heading towards a place where you've been delivered from but if we do not share the truth I'm not talking about a made-up version I'm not talking about someone else's story I'm talking about your true deliverance And when you came into the reality that you needed that deliverance and the only way that deliverance was going to take place is that you had to go to the father. It was not something you could do in the flesh. There are some hurts that we've gone through and we hold on to those hurts even though we've moved on physically. But you have to go back to the root of that hurt. And you have to really search yourself and, 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 and God, any ill will that I'm holding within me, that I am delivered from, that I, I, I no longer hold that against that person, that I am truly, truly delivered and set free. Those are those things that we need to be purged of so that he can pour into us. It's those things that we've tucked away within the corners of our lives that only he can touch and only he can deliver us from. To be an effective witness of Christ. That just as once you were a stranger until you came into the knowledge of him, until you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, extend that witness to someone else. Let us share those effective witnesses and, and, and words of encouragement outside of the body of Christ. Let us step out of our comfort zones. We love you here at The Balance of Life. It's always an honor and a pleasure to spend time with you. We look forward to sharing with you again on tomorrow. Stay encouraged.